Hello everybody, my name is Ace. I will be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and scared companion this evening as we continue Burrows. Uh, last time around, you know, some red flags with Mark started to appear. <clears throat> uh, mainly the part where he practically choked us out um, in his apartment. And you know, he also had clothes that were our exact size prepared already. <clears throat> a little concerning. But he brought us to Times Square, where, you know, not a lot of things really went well. But they're trying to make the best out of the moment now, and he brought us to the Empire State Building. That's about all that happened last time, so without further ado, let's get right back on into it. <clears throat> Mark pockets the photo, and we head inside the lobby. Everything is made of marble and brass, and the art decor designs fit perfectly with the color theme. Welcome, first time here? Yes, actually, uh, I have a question. Of course, ask away. I look around to make sure Mark's not in earshot. I see him admiring some framed photos on the other side of the room, so I think I'm in the clear. I don't trust that. I lean in to whisper. Is it true, Juan, that they used to land dirigibles on the roof of this building? The man I came with keeps insisting, kept insisting it the whole way here. The Martin laughs, elbowing his co-worker in jest as she chuckles along with him. <laughs> oh boy, a sucker's born every minute. Excuse me? He wipes a tear away and reaches under the desk, pulling out a photo to show me. I gasp. It shows a blimp almost the length of the building docking at the top. <laughs> Some wise guy doctored this back in the 30s and got a rumor going. Sure, there were talks about it, but it's obviously a terrible idea. Aircrafts and tall buildings don't mix. I nod, wondering if Mark was pulling my leg or he genuinely believed the rumor. I thank the attendant and walk over to the sitting area Mark's standing by. He's staring at the schematics of the building's construction. I'd seen plenty of those in my dad's workshop. Contractors would bring over plans and go over the required materials piece by piece before he'd settle on a price. <laughs> Are you a fan of blueprints? Yep, they have this lovely mathematical quality to them. Where art meets function, you know? There's a piece in our museum's vault that I've begged Mr. Cartwright to put it up for auction, but he just won't budge. That's a bummer. <laughs> yes, well, I have a plan. I asked Lauren, she's the head of the conserv oh, conservation department, to select it for our holiday party's charity auction. Wow, she can do that? <laughs> Technically. Her role as event coordinator overrides our boss since the auction is funded by a non-profit our organization. A non-for-profit organization. It's foolproof. I don't think that's foolproof. He smiles si slyly, clearly proud of his master plan coming together. I guess Mark can be a little conniving when he needs to be. I don't mind, as long as he doesn't try to use that big brain to mess with me. I think he's already done that, homie. Well, we've seen everything in the lobby. What's next? He points at a row of gilded elevators behind me. Only way is up, come on. We head into one of the elevators and to my surprise, it has an attendant waiting inside. Yes, it's not a dead career after all. Observation deck, please. Doors close and the machine lurches upwards faster than expected. I'm imagining the floors that must be zipping by second by second, grip the handrail, feeling dizzy. I was wrong, this is still terrifying. Big buildings are bad. Oh jeez, are you, you alright? You know what always makes me feel better? What? Dude, that does sound kind of cool. <clears throat> On the trip back down, you can jump and get some hang time for a second. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, very cool. This was a terrible idea. I'm seriously close to losing my lunch. 
thankfully I feel the elevator door stop. Oh, I feel the elevator stop and the doors open. <clears throat> I walk out and get hit with a blast of cold air. A strong wind practically pushing me back into the car. Oh god, we're outside. Why are we outside? Because it's the top of the building, dude. <laughs> Come on, you can see the whole city from up here. I cling against the wall for dear life. We're on the roof. Top floor I couldn't even see from the ground. From this per perspective, it looks like we're floating in the sky. All the other buildings are gone. Mark bravely walks out towards the flimsy looking guardrail to take a look. Mark, be, be careful. <laughs> Don't worry, come on. Let's try to find my house. You can just imagine looking down from there sends a shiver through my body. And I slide down the wall to the cold floor. I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> oh man, what a rush. Can you believe they used to land blimps up here? <laughs> uh, help. Uh, oh shit. Oh, he's so cute when he's concerned. He runs back over and helps me up. I can't help but cling to his sleeves like a child. It feels like the next strong breeze will knock me off the side and send me tumbling to my death. Why didn't you tell me you were afraid of heights? I've never been this high up before. What about a plane? You've never flown on a plane? No! I'm getting annoyed. Why is he making this sound like my fault again? I just want to get the hell off the roof before I pass it. It's totally your fault! <clears throat> wanted to bring you up to have fun, and you didn't tell him that you were scared of heights, dude. No, I'm going back down, sorry. I, I can't do this. Hey, it, it's fine. Let's go together, okay? I nod, and we wait for the elevator to come back up. He stands behind and shields me from the wind with his broad back, his long arms caging me in like a safety net. It works, and thankfully the next elevator is also empty. We rush in and ride back down. <laughs> Mark resists trying out his hang time trick and continues to rub my back until we reach the ground floor. Ah, <sighs> solid earth. I'm shivering as I walk by the welcome booth. The Martin shoots Mark a dirty look, silently accusing him of traumatizing me. He mouths sorry and holds the door open. Oh my god. I race out of the building and walk over to a trash can, packing up all the spit that had formed from my pre-vomit-induced retching. Oh, don't feel bad, Mark. Mark waits patiently for me by the door, looking upset once again. No! Alright, so this didn't go very well either. At least I can brag to everyone back home that I stood 102 stories high and lived. <laughs> and he would just be impressed. I didn't try to jump off. <laughs> when I can breathe easy again, I walk over to the big lug and gently punch his shoulder. Hey. I feel a lot better now. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm the one that put you through this in the first place. I feel awful. This one's on me, alright? Just no more tall buildings. Not even my house? One exception. He straightens up and rewards me with another big smile. I guess we don't have to go to the top of the Statue of Liberty then. I gulp knowing that another surprise like that would have fully sent me over the edge. Maybe we should skip that for now, as fun as that sounds. Well, that was the final stop on my tour. What else did you want to do? Before I can answer, my stomach growls. <laughs> Lunch would be nice. <laughs> I could go for some chow, too. Let me find a phone and I'll call up one of my usual places for a reservation. Wow, a reservation. Seems awfully fancy for a casual day out. But I guess this is just how Mark operates. Back at the manor, we cooked. We had cooks fixing our meals, but lunch was hardly ever more than soup or a sandwich. We walk a few blocks back. We walk a few blocks and find a public phone booth. Mark thumbs in a nickel and whips out a little notebook full of phone numbers. What are you feeling like? French, Italian, maybe Asian fusion. Uh, French sounds good. It's the only one I'm really qualified to judge. 
Then I, or, uh, Etna and Jean cooked up a mean Cajun fry every Sunday after church. But every now and then, they'd try some authentic French recipes from cookbooks. Hello, Yvonne's? <laughs> yes, it's Mark. I'm... Hmm? What do you mean there's a private party? I've been dining with you for eight years now. Surely you can find me a... Excuse me? You want to say that one again? Oh. Oh, really? Well, up yours too, pal. Oh my god. He slams the receiver down so hard it rattles the windows and storms out, leaning against the booth with his arms crossed, scrambling to pull out another cigarette. No dice? Can you believe they couldn't get us a single table all day? If, if Reynard had picked up, he would have found us something. Flick, drag, exhale. No clue who this jackass was either. Must have been some new hire who didn't get the memo. Well, they just lost a loyal customer. I don't think they give a fuck, Mark. <laughs> Come on, it's not worth blacklisting the damn place over. Wouldn't be the first place I blacklisted, or rather, blacklisted me. But I guess you're right. We still have to eat, don't we? We could try the Blue Bungalow now, and just, or in Central Park. The idea of sitting through another angry call fills me with dread. I hook my arm through Mark's to tug him along, and I start to walk. Hey, what are you... Let's just look around. We can try something new. I don't know anything around here. Yeah, something new. Where's your spirit of adventure? Haha. <laughs> I left it at home. I ignore his whining and sniff around, hoping my strongest sense can find us some grub. It was hard to smell past Mark's smokiness, but eventually something sticks out. Savory, fried, creamy. I follow my nose and end up at a row of various shops that form a large luncheonette. I've never heard that phrase. Rough day laborers are waiting in line to grab a quick bite as well as a few businessmen. Mark's basically a rag doll at this point and I pull him over trying to find the source of the scent store by store. I quickly find it. Dana's Polish Kitchen. Let's try this place. I've never had Polish food before. <laughs> From this dump, I don't want to. I don't want us to get sick. Damn, Mark. Okay, I get it. You're fucking richy rich, dude. <laughs> what the fuck, man? He says that a little too loudly. A few shop owners shooting annoyed glances our way. I wince and try to smile back to let them know I'm on their side. Where's this snobbiness in Mark coming from? Did he forget the little hole in the wall he took me to yesterday? I see him tapping his foot, eager to leave. Trust me, the best food is always from small places like this. Look at all these people, it can't be that bad. Alright. I fucking love pierogies. Good fucking choice, Gray. I ordered a few pierogies and some kielbasa. I'm not familiar with that, to start with. They sound the most familiar, and I don't want to risk getting something risky when Mark's being so difficult. Alright, that'll be a dollar eighty-five. Oh shit. I whip up my wallet. There's about 70 cents in a free drink voucher for Jean's bar that would be beyond expired by now. Um, one second. Hey, uh, can I borrow two bucks? Sorry. Huh? Oh, sure. Reaches into a coat pocket and hands me a few crumpled bills. There's at least six in here. Guess this is just spare change for him. I grab what I need and run back to pay for her order before sitting down across from him. I should have guessed you wouldn't have any cash on you. My bad. It's all right. Mm hmm. Hey. Yes. You want to know something funny? Sure. Oh, this conversation is so bad. I'm so sorry, Gray. Mark's such a little baby. I'm actually having a great time. <laughs> wow, T today's been a complete disaster. No, it hasn't. Do you know why? Enlighten me. I gently boop his nose and giggle as his ears flick wildly in confusion. Because I'm spending it with you, wise guy. 
<laughs> That's enough to make up for almost giving you a heart attack? Even a shitty take can be fun if you spend it with a friend. So you really think of us as friends then? I can hear his tail thumping against the bench as it wags ferociously. I do, <laughs> but you'll have to make it through this meal or I'll start questioning my taste and acquaintances. Deal? Okay, I'll try. For you. There's the mark I recognize. You. He shifts mood so quickly, staying on his good side is going to be a key to this all working out. A few minutes later, a man brings our food on plastic trays. The presentation is lacking, but it smells incredible. Six cheese pierogies, each with sour cream and applesauce for dipping. And two long coiled sausages. My mouth is watering already. Cheese pierogies are fucking good. I dig in and I fall in love immediately. Savory fried dough with salty cheese, sweet caramelized onions, and a hit of sour cream. Hit a hint, uh, a hit of the sour from the cream makes the perfect combination for a hearty meal during these harsh winter months. I work my way over to the kielbasa, and I'm surprised by the smoky flavor and slight heat. I don't know that that word. Nothing close to andul, anduel, or anything in a Cajun kitchen, but enough to be appreciated. I hear Mark moaning into his food, clearly echoing my sentiments. Holy fuck, this is good. And it was so cheap. I can't stop eating. Poland, I'm so sorry about World War II. You deserve better. Okay, Mark. I have no idea what that means, but yes, justice for Poland. I almost get up to order more, but I don't want to get sick of something so lovely. We quickly polish our plates and leave the trays at the front. The cashier gives us a knowing smirk, having witnessed our religious experience. <laughs> I thank him and we walk out. Feli's full and mood's greatly improved. I check the clock on a nearby lamppost and see it's almost four. But the light's already starting to dim and I feel pretty tired having been on my feet the whole day. I hear Mark yawn and imagine he slept even less than I did. Probably having been woken up by me after I wandered to his bedroom during my nightmare. That nightmare. Hey, feeling tired yet? Yeah, a little. <laughs> Might have just been the food, but I'm about ready to head home. Me too. Your couch is sounding really good about now. Hmm, it does sound good. I spot a subway station and recall seeing the same line not far from his apartment. Hey, why don't we take the train? I'm curious about the subway. <laughs> he looks at the station and then back at me, his nose scrunched up in disgust. Ugh, I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, just about anybody can ride those things. Remember your little encounter with the friendly flasher? It's how most of New York gets around, no? Surely it's... <laughs> Ray, you're with me now. You don't have to put yourself into a dangerous situations anymore. I'll get us a cab. But... Oh. He ignores my protests and walks to the curb. He gets ignored by a few cabs and starts to get pissed off again. God damn it, I guess it wasn't the cigarettes after all. I thought we'd made some progress, but all it takes is one little mishap to set him off. And when he's like that, he says things that are completely out of character. Yeah, Gray, that's what we call red flags, buddy. Especially that comment about people who ride the train. He was speaking so charitably about the homeless yesterday, and now he doesn't want to risk riding in the same car as one? Did he reach out to me for another reason? Yeah. Is that whole thing an act to gain my trust? I mean, kind-hearted or not, you don't bring strangers into your home without a good reason. And so readily accepting all the odd things I say by accident? Surely that must have set off some red flags by now. Twenty minutes pass and the sun's practically set. He manages to finally hail us a taxi after working through a few cigarettes while pacing in circles angrily. I reluctantly scoot in next to Mark, and as he sternly... Ooh, as he's sternly giving the cabbie directions. I start to zone out. The 
calming purr of the engine, putting me into a trance once again. Mark's voice, now hoarse from yelling, begins to fade out. Okay, wait. Can I read this? No, I can't. <laughs> I walk across the damp, mossy moorland guided by moonlight. Oh, a fragment. Our day out. Oh, it's an audio? What? Okay. What is this? I'm assuming. Oh, okay. It keeps going. Okay. I couldn't see the progress bar. I was so confused. Okay. Well, that's not concerning at all. Is, is Gray breathing like that right now? Is that what that means? I'm assuming. I walk across the damp, mossy moorland guided by moonlight. The cool night and the fireflies seem to curtsy at me from the park, continuing their intricate dance. I use my staff to pull myself up onto a nearby ledge, tiny bells adorning it, softly echoing throughout the clearing. The sky is full of glistening stars, and I sit on my newly found perch, gazing upward at the beauty great mother has provided for us. Suddenly, my whiskers twitch, and I sense the chaos rising in the distance. The trees are muttering to one another. Something is wrong. I pull myself up onto my staff and sniff the air. Fire. Coming from the south. Where the love. I have to... to wake up, we're back home. Got a slight crick in my neck. I slept a lot harder than intended. I'm surprised Mark didn't wake me up this time. 